Hello viewers, it's another beautiful weekend and you're welcome to News Weekly Highlights where we draw your attention again to our major stories for the week. I am Abbasedi Taiwo. During the week, the GAVCON 4 meeting at Kigali, Rwanda brought over 1,000 people from 53 nations in Kigali as the conference drew together Anglicans from around the world who are seeking to guard the unchanging, transforming gospel of Jesus Christ and to proclaim him to the world. According to reports, the conference is taking place at a unique time in the history of the Anglican Church, whereby in February, the Church of England decided to create and implement prayers for, of blessing for same-sex marriages. As the primates of the Global South Fellowship of Anglican Churches, who represent most of the world's worshipping Anglicans, stated that they are in impaired communion with the Church of England and said that they do not recognize the present Archbishop of Canterbury, Justin Welby, as the first among equals leader of the Global Anglican Communion. The GAFCON primates went further to endorse the statement released by the Global South Fellowship of Anglicans, pointing to paragraph 13 of the Jerusalem Declaration in 2008 that says, and I quote, We reject the authority of those churches and leaders who have denied the Orthodox faith in word or deed. End of quote. Meanwhile, the General Secretary of GAFCON and Archbishop in the Anglican Church of Nigeria, the Most Reverend Dr. Benjamin Kwashi, says that the Church of England's decision to depart from the Bible's teaching is troubling for many Anglicans. He also said that some have accused GAFCON of creating division in the Anglican Church, but he strongly disagreed as there have been deep disagreements over the authority of the Bible among members of the Anglican Communion for quite some time, but do not seek division, rather want to move with the mission of God in the world. Still on GAFCON 4, that is the fourth Global Anglican Future Conference held, being a movement of a global family of authentic Anglicans standing together to retain and restore the Bible to the heart of the Anglican Communion with the theme, To Whom Shall We Go? commenced the GAFCON 4 meeting with an opening ceremony welcoming all delegates to Kigali, Rwanda. The conference had about 1,300 people from 53 nations of the world to chart the way forward on the need to transform the gospel of Jesus Christ, proclaiming him to the world. In his welcome address during the opening ceremony, the GAFCON chairman, Archbishop Foley Beach, appreciated God for all the years despite the challenges. He said God worked out all things for the good of his people and encouraged all to go back and spread the gospel. So as we gather this week from all over the world, I want to encourage you to keep the following in mind as we travel together this week and then we return to our own provinces. I would like to share what I call the four marks of a continuing spirit-filled movement. Or rather, we could say four marks of modern Anglicanism. You see, we could go on playing church, being religious, and even making bold statements and make no spiritual impact on our world. What a tragedy that would be. We want to see true revival break out and spread to every part of the world. The question each of us must ask ourselves, is there something in my life which the Lord has shown me of which I need to repent? If we're going to be the people of God that the Lord wants us to be, we must be a repenting church. If we want true spiritual awakening, we must be a repenting church. We must be a reconciling church. A reconciling church. When I speak of reconciliation, I'm not talking about being reconciled with the world or with sin or with sinful behavior or giving up one's principles or compromising biblical truth in order to be reconciled. The scriptures tell us that we are all ministers of reconciliation and that we're being reconciled with one another as well. This reconciliation is based on the cross of Jesus, on the truth of the scriptures, but not compromising the teaching of the scriptures. Also, in their separate remarks, GAFCON General Secretary, Most Reverend Dr. Benjamin Kwashi, and the Primate of Rwanda, who is the host, Archbishop Lawrence Mbanda, warns against inescapable consequences of rejecting the authority of God's word as GAFCON desires to bring and keep the Bible at the center of everything they do. Jesus gave clear warnings that some would turn away and that trouble and persecution would come, but he added, take heed. I have overcome the world, hallelujah. And he further said, and behold, I am with you 
always to the end of the age. Take note of the power of the gospel. The world around us is falling into growing state of confusion and in some cases disintegration. But it is a part of the gospel which can turn things around. The gospel of Jesus Christ carries the power of God. The effect of the gospel will be seen in the life of whoever believes in that gospel, no matter their nationality, tribe or gender. And the fruit of the gospel will be seen in righteousness, in holiness, service, development, health, and in physical and spiritual blessings that accompany that person in the community. The Christian gospel does not destroy, it builds. It brings life in all fullness to everybody without discrimination. When the tough gets going, we become disillusioned. We get confused and things start going south. The prophet Jeremiah in chapter 23 verse 26 warns against inescapable consequences of rejecting the authority of God's word. Gafcon wants and desires and commits to bringing and keeping the Bible at the center. Let us keep the unchanging word of God. There was good a message from the Prime Minister of Rwanda, Right Honorable Edward Ingerente, as the delegates were entertained with their cultural dance. Meanwhile, the Prime Minister of the Republic of Rwanda, Right Honorable Dr. Edward Ingerente, has appreciated the role of churches, including the Anglican Church of Rwanda, in the process of unity and reconciliation, as well as in contributing to socio-economic transformation of the country. He made this known in his remarks while representing the President, Paul Kageme, at the official opening of the 4th Global Anglican Future Conference, GAFCON, holding at Kigali Convention Center. The Prime Minister commends the Anglican Church of Rwanda for the continued collaboration with the government in the implementation of programs in health, education and income generation projects which are improving the lives of the citizens. Rwanda appreciates the role of churches, including the Anglican Church of Rwanda, in the process of unity and reconciliation, as well as in contributing to socio-economic transformation of our country. In this regard, we commend the Anglican Church of Rwanda for the, continue, the continued collaboration with the government in, um, in implementation of programs in health, education, and income generation projects which are improving the lives of our citizens. Reacting to the theme of the conference, to whom shall we go? The Prime Minister said it resonates with challenges facing the world today, which includes climate change, wars and conflict, family challenges, effects of global pandemics, especially COVID-19, and its devastating socio-economic effects. He said these problems require consolidated efforts of all state and non-state actors, including religious affiliations and civil society organizations working together for the betterment of humanity. Excellencies, distinguished guests, of course I was not part of the team that selected the, the, the theme of today's gathering, but uh, the theme of this conference, which is to whom shall we go, reminds me of the challenges the world is facing today. This includes climate change, wars and conflicts, family challenges, effect of global pandemics, especially COVID-19, and its devastating socioeconomic effects. The problems, these problems require consolidated efforts of all state and non-state actors, including religious affiliations and civil society organizations working together for development of humanity. Many of our communities are looking to you, our spiritual leaders, for guidance on how to build satisfying lives in which our families remain strong, our children and youth are able to grow into productive and uh, fulfilled adults in nations that are dignified, inclusive, 
and the prosperous. Moving on, the National Prayer Conference of the Evangelical Fellowship in Anglican Church held in Ijesha North Diocese with the theme, This Kind, as taken from Mark chapter 9, verse 29a. The conference, which was the 10th edition, started at Onicha Zone in the year 2013 under the divine guidance of the Holy Spirit, an inspiration given to the Right Reverend Henry Okeke, and it is now an annual event. Important features of the conference are expositions, intercessions, and messages. The expositor for this edition of the conference was the Right Reverend Joseph Ulushola, the Diocesan Bishop of Ijesha Northeast. The National Prayer Secretary of EFAC Evangelist in Ameka, Ahize Chuku, in his words, appreciated the diocese for a well-prepared hosting. He noted, amongst other things, the accommodation, the availability of diocesan camping officials to assist as need arose. According to him, this year's hosting is wonderful. He commended the hospitality of the diocesan and everyone that received them. This will be the first time the Ijesha North Diocesan Campground, Rehoboth Mountain, is hosting a conference of such magnitude. Magnitude. The Right Reverend Christian Unya, Bishop of Nikkei Anglican Diocese in Enugu, has said it is condemnable for religious and traditional leaders to openly endorse political parties and their preferred candidates. The bishop was speaking during the second session of the Sixth Synod of the Diocese held at the Church of the Beatitudes, Trans Ekulu, Enugu. Speaking on the election petitions before the tribunal, Bishop Unya urged the judiciary to uphold its reputation by administering justice. He also suggested that the Independent National Electoral Commission, that is INEC, should conduct a voter registration audit whilst sim simultaneously prosecuting election criminals to act as a deterrence to future offenders. Bishop Unya urged INEC to address a variety of difficulties in future elections, including poor voter turnout, violence, delays in the distribution of election materials, and the transmission of results. Also, Right Reverend Christian Unya, the Bishop Diocese of Nikkei Anglican Communion in Enugu, states while delivering his bishop's charge at the second session of the Sixth Synod of the Diocese at the Church of the Beatitudes in Enugu, urged governments at all levels to focus on job creation to curtail rising insecurity and terrorism. He noted that terrorism and kidnapping for ransom might have reduced, but it is not because of the CBN's currency redesign. According to him, most of the hoodlums got busy with election activities. Bishop Onya noted also that the 2023 Global Hunger Index ranked Nigeria 103 out of 121 countries worst hit. He said while the CBN's currency redesign and cashless economic policy achieved some of their objectives, more were not met and might not be met. Bishop Onya noted that mopping up currency in circulation was to manage inflation and exchange rate crisis. The cleric expressed dismay as to how a country could deepen a cashless economy without first ensuring that the needed infrastructure and platforms to implement the policy efficiently and effectively were in place. We'll go on a short break now. When we return, News Weekly highlights continue. Stay tuned. <laughs> Yes, my name is Right Reverend Ephraim Oketukui Kako. By the grace of God, I am the Bishop, Anglican Diocese of Amit in the province of the Niger. I want to encourage you to keep watching SNN. It's very wonderful, it's very enriching, it's so blaring and preparing you both for now and eternity. Keep watching and God bless you. My name is or Dede G. James, the Bishop of Dallas of Lagos West, will enjoy this platform at all times. I encourage everybody, be interested, develop yourself, develop your family, call your family together so that everybody will enjoy themselves as we fellowship together. God bless you. Amen. Welcome back. If you're just joining us, you are watching the News Weekly Highlights where we draw your attention again to our major stories for the week. Moving on. Anglican Boys Academy Oro in Irik Podu, local government area of Kwara State, had their first inter-house sports. During the occasion, the Bishop of Igbomina Anglican Diocese, Right Reverend Emmanuel Adekola, made an appeal to the parents and guardians of students, reminding them of their duties in giving qualitative education to their children and words to prepare them for future challenges. A CNN News correspondent tells the story. We give glory to God who has made today's event of the leading edition of the Inter-House Sports of the Anglican Boys Academy possible. 
Parents and guardians have again been reminded of their duties in giving qualitative education to their children and wards to prepare them for future challenges. The Bishop of Ibobina Anglican Diocese, Right Reverend Emmanuel Adekola, made the appeal at the first inter-house sports of Anglican Boys Academy, Ore, in Ire Bodu, local government of Kwara State. Bishop Adekola said that adequate education built on sound biblical principles would make the children to become breadwinners, job creators, and world changers. Why noting that education without godliness would make students tools in the hands of the devil, Bishop Adekola urged the students to be godly within and outside the school premises. He, however, condemned evil acts such as kidnapping and robbery and ritual killings ravaging the country, therefore called on parents to set good examples for their children and stressed that the fear of God would make children to be habitable and enviable. The right to Reverend Adekola, who is also the proprietor of the Anglican Boys Academy, or emphasized the bodily exercise would improve the brain health, help manage weight, reduce the risk of diseases, as well as strengthen bones and muscles. It is often said that all work and no play makes Ayo a dull boy. Sports and exercise should be a regular activity for everyone at home school, community, and the society at large. Charity begins at home, and what we are witnessing today may look like a child's play, but talents can be discovered for state, national, and even international stage. And we are not limiting ourselves to football, but as you can see, athletics and other sports are being given attention in this inter-house sports competition. You will observe that we have the regular four colors identifying the four houses. Then we have named the houses Governor's House, King's House, Principal House, and Bishop's House. But let me assure you, the bishop who happens to be the bishop and proprietor belongs to all the houses. So what do I say? Let the best house win. In a remark, principal of the Anglican Boys Academy, Mr. Adefolalu Babatunde, who stressed that the inter-house sports were the first to be done since the establishment of the school in 2018, emphasized that sports teaches discipline, focus, dedication, hard work, commitment, and teamwork. He also opined that sports would give students room to be agile, fit, increase concentration in academics, as well as help to have stable and mental health. Dignitaries are the first annual inter-house sports of the Anglican Boys Academy, or uh, included wife of the bishop, Mrs. Josephina Decola, clergy from Ibomina Diocese, among others. Anglican Boys Academy is a secondary school owned by Ibomina Anglican Diocese, established in 2018 to raise new generation of leaders through a broad-based qualitative education in the areas of science, mathematics, technology and Christian virtues that will result into birth of breadwinners, job creators and world changes. Happy faces there. Thank you so much, Nzubiji, for that report. Uh, moving on, the Women Organization of the Diocese of Kwara, um, led by Mama Kwara, Mrs. Adewali, happily donated to the diocese a church building with a vicarage, replacing the old structure used as a place of worship. The journey started from 19th of March 2022, when the foundation was laid. In his homely at the event, the retired Bishop of Omoaran Diocese, Right Reverend Philip Adeyemo, joined a host of other well-wishers to appreciate diocese and women for this giant stride, as this is the first of its kind in the diocese. He established from the scriptures that they will be rewarded by God because God has a record for all deeds of men. Furthermore, the bishop added that more than giving physically to God, they must also give their lives totally to Jesus so that their rewards will not end here. Also present at the event were the diocesan legal luminaries led by the Chancellor Sir J.S. Bangbuye, S.A.N., diocesan officials, representatives of the House of Clergy, Clergy Wives, House of Laity, amongst others. Coincidentally, this marked the 26th marriage anniversary of the Lord Bishop of Diocese of Kwara and the wife, Bishop Sunday and Mrs. Adewoli. Hence, the marriage anniversary Thanksgiving added color to the event. 
The Diocese of Niger West Anglican Children Ministry has concluded her annual Easter holiday camp. The camp, which was held at Emmanuel Church, Umueri, Anambra State, had over 518 children in attendance. The theme for the 2023 Easter camp is The Church, Children, and Our Future, with a Bible text from the book of Psalm chapter 127 and 128. The children were reminded of their importance to God and the need to walk in the ways of the Lord. Churches were also advised not to neglect the children in the church programs because without the children in the church, there is no future for the church. The diocesan chaplain, Venerable Emmanuel Ikechuku Onovo, thanked the Bishop of the Diocese of Niger West, the Right Reverend Johnson Ekwe, and his wife, Mama Niger West, for their support. The chaplain thanked the host, Vicar Venerable Theodore, for donations to the children. Some of the resource persons who spoke in the camp encouraged the children to be of good behavior wherever they find themselves, adding that as the future of the, ch of the church and homes, the children should be raised in such a way that they will not bring disappointment to the Lord and to their families. Nigerians have been charged to wait watch and pray and see what God would do despite the irregularities faced during the 2023 general elections. The vicar of All Saints Church, Wusi Zone 5, Abuja, the Venerable Enes Onoa, gave this charge while in an interview with ACNN Newsmen in Abuja. God is still in charge and in control. Human beings are full of realities, including at the time of uh, elections. The one we had recently in Nigeria is a test case and a pointer that all with human affairs and society is not well. Uh, but you know that despite irregularities here and there, we still know that uh, every government is put in place by God. And what we need as subjects is to bring ourselves under the authority, constituted authority of the land. Some people are threatening uh, fire and brimstone. It's not for us to take laws into our hand, but to patiently wait on God, who is involved in affairs of men, never on a holiday and never withdrawn. Nigeria is not above him. Nigeria is under his watch. So for me, as we move to a new transition, another level, we will see the finger of God. And that is what I think should be our attitude. Wait, watch, and see what the Lord will do. The vicar in charge of the Church of the Pentecost Oka, Diocese of Oka, Anglican Communion, Venerable Ekene Nwafo, has charged its parishioners to be rapturable. He was speaking during a sermon titled Christians Living Hope in Oka, drawn from 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 3 to 4. He urged the faithful to live incorruptible and undefiled lives to fit into God's desire for man. The clergy said that Christians can live above sin through the power of God gained through faith unto salvation that will be revealed in the last time. He said that living a holy life is possible once the life of faith is increased in the daily living of Christians, then temptations will be overcome. He said that the Bible in Galatians chapter 5 verse 16 has assured that if Christians walk in the spirit and do not fulfill the lust of the flesh, they will be true Christians who strive by help of the Holy Spirit to live right. Now away from Nigeria, the Bishop of the Diocese of Kinkizi, Right Reverend Dan Zureka, has revealed plans by the diocese to invest in ecotourism to increase its self-sustainability, taking advantage of the proximity of Bwindi National Park and Queen Elizabeth National Park. Bishop Zureka made the revelation during a meeting with diocesan stakeholders in Kampala. According to, the, according to Bishop Zoreka, the diocese plans to transform the Ngoto Resort Hotel into an eco-friendly facility to attract tourists visiting the nearby national parks. Before the meeting, the bishop showed stakeholders the apartment purchased by the diocese in 2019 in Bukoto, which has since then been generating revenue for the diocese. Bishop Zoreka stressed the diocese's commitment to investing in self-sustainability projects and encouraged stakeholders to support the diocese in its efforts. Dr. Garuga, the senior advisor of the Diocese on Self-Sustainability commended the Diocese for its focus on self-sustainability and urged them to transform education standards in the area. And that's it for this week's news highlights. Remember, weekly news highlights is to keep you abreast with our major stories for the week. Until next time, I remain Abbas Taiwo. Goodbye. <laughs>